You've signed up for Azure. You've logged into the Azure portal. What do you do now? My name is Eric Boyd. I'm an Azure MVP, a Microsoft Regional Director, and the founder of ResponsiveX, where we help customers run workloads and develop applications in Azure. Over the next several minutes, I'm going to show you how you can begin working with your Azure subscription using the Azure portal. You'll see how to browse the Azure services, find your resources, and customize your portal experience. I'll show you how you can manage your Azure environment on the go. And in these next several minutes, I hope I help you get familiar with the Azure portal so you are comfortable working with your new Azure subscription. To get to the Azure portal, you simply navigate to portal.azure.com in your web browser. The very first time you log into the Azure portal with your new Azure subscription, you will begin in the Azure Quick Start Center. This is a great place to start your Azure journey. The guided experiences in the Azure Quick Start Center will help you increase your knowledge of Azure and speed up your cloud environment onboarding and setup. The Get Started area is the first of the three major areas that you will find in the Quick Start Center. Here you will be presented with a checklist of concepts and walkthroughs that will help you get started with Azure. The checklist starts at the beginning of your Azure journey with navigating the Azure portal, then builds upon previous learnings, guiding you along your Azure journey. When you click into a topic, you'll find a short video, key takeaways and links from the video, and additional learning resources to deepen your Azure knowledge. When you're ready to create Azure resources for your solutions, the Start a Project Guides will help you learn about the options, costs, and required prerequisites before committing to using an Azure service. You will find the Start a Project Guides in the Projects and Guides area of the Azure Quick Start Center. In this same area, you'll find setup guides designed for IT admins and cloud architects. These introduce key Azure concepts, provide structured steps for setting up your Azure environment, and guidance for assessing, planning, and preparing migrations of your workloads to Azure. If you want to learn even more about Azure, in the Take an Online Course area, you will find free training from Microsoft Learn's modularized courses. If it's not your first time in the Azure portal, you will either start on the home screen or on your main dashboard, depending on how you have it configured. But don't worry, you can always get back to the Azure Quick Start Center. On the home screen, you see recent and recommended services across the top, with a list of your recent resources below. Below your list of recent resources, you'll find buttons for subscriptions, resource groups, all resources, and dashboard to help you navigate to your Azure resources. And towards the bottom, you'll find buttons for tools that help you manage your Azure environment and links to useful resources, including documentation and the Azure Quick Start Center. On the left, you'll find the portal menu that helps you browse resources by their type. In my menu, I see virtual machines, databases, and more. The list of services on the navigator is just my favorite services. If I go to the top of this list and click on All Services, this will take me into the full services list where I can browse the Azure services by category. I'll click on the All category at the top and scroll through this list, just so you can see the massive amount of Azure services that are available to you. Now let's say that I'm looking for SQL-related services. I'll type SQL into the search box at the top. This list will be filtered down to the SQL-related services. And I mentioned earlier, the services listed in the portal menu is just a list of my favorited services. When I hover over any of these, I'll see a hover card. In the upper right-hand corner of this hover card, there's a star. Since this one is checked, it will be shown in my list of favorited services. If I find one that is not checked, I can simply check the star 
and it will be added to my list of favorite services. I'm going to get rid of that search criteria and I'll go back out to my home screen. Now I want to direct your attention to the upper right hand corner of the portal. On the far right, you will see the account you logged into the Azure portal with. If you click on your account email address, you will see a drop down that provides you with options to sign out, view your account information, and sign in with a different account. To the left of your account is a series of icons that provide global controls for the Azure portal. If you click the icon to the left of your email address, you can provide feedback about your experience with the portal. This feedback goes directly to the portal team and they listen carefully and improve the experience of the portal based on your feedback. Continuing to move right to left, the next icon is the question mark and this is the help and support area. From here, you can see any issues that may be impacting the availability of Azure regions and services in the health events section. Below health events, you will find the links to resources like Microsoft Q&A, where you can ask questions and get answers from the Azure community. You will find a link to Azure documentation, billing FAQs, and the Quick Start Center. At the bottom, there's also a button that you can press to submit and manage your support requests. Towards the middle of this series of icons is a gear icon, and that's the settings area. This is where you can customize your experience with the portal, including color and contrast themes, language, currency, and the formatting of dates and times. From here, you can also switch between the intra ID directories you are a member of and select subscriptions you want to see in the portal. Towards the left of the settings area is the bell icon. This is the notifications pane where you can see any changes since your last login. You get updates on the status of your deployments, best practices for your subscription. And if you're in a credited account like me or a free account, you'll see the amount of remaining credit. When there are new notifications that you haven't seen, you'll see a counter over the bell icon with the number of unseen notifications. You'll want to make sure you check those out so you don't miss anything happening in your subscription. And the final icon on the left launches the Azure Cloud Shell. The Cloud Shell is a browser based shell that enables you to create and manage Azure resources from the command line without needing to install and configure command line tools on your workstation. The first time you launch the Cloud Shell, it will ask you to create a storage account. This is used to save scripts and files that you might use in the Cloud Shell. I showed you how you can browse your resources from the Azure Portal menu. The search bar at the top of the Azure Portal is a great tool for quickly finding resources, resource groups, services, marketplace offerings, users and intra ID and documentation. The search results are grouped by type and you can focus on a specific group by clicking on the filter pills at the top. If you are on the go, not sitting in front of your computer and need to manage or monitor resources in your Azure subscription, you need the Azure mobile app. You can access the Azure portal on your phone, but it's really designed for desktop and tablet browsers. The Azure mobile app can be installed on your iOS or Android phone, and you get a first class experience for monitoring and managing your Azure resources. And you can take advantage of native app capabilities like push notifications for your monitoring alerts. The Azure portal and Azure mobile app are not the only ways to create and manage resources in your Azure subscription, but they are the ways I'd recommend you begin working with your new Azure subscription. You now know how to browse the Azure services, find your resources, customize your experience with the portal, and get a guided experience as you create resources and solutions using the Azure Quick Start Center. In the next video of this series, I will walk through the Azure free account, the $200 30-day trial, the first 12 months of free services, and the always free services. Before I wrap up, I'd like to invite you to join me at our weekly Azure Live Q&A session. During the 30-minute session, 
I will host an interactive and live Q&A to answer your Azure questions.